Now, back to diabetes. Well, away from radiation diabetes, back to diabetes. So Dr. Cleve's work basically showed World War I and World War II, when there's less sugar, there's less diabetes. That's pretty direct, isn't it? You can see where it goes down during the war. Less sugar consumed, less diabetes. World War II, less sugar consumed, less diabetes. Not too complicated. And we have the introduction of high fructose corn syrup. Really uh, a disaster. The rate of diabetes really skyrocketed after it was uh, brought in in the 80s. Fructose is really a problem. Now, this is something that may tweak your mind a little bit. Protein raises your insulin just like carbohydrate. So what you're seeing here is if you kind of look on it, you can see where it says beef and you see the red dot above and then it says yogurt. That's your insulin uh, secretions. Fish, insulin. So the, the point is a quarter pound of beef will raise your insulin as much as a quarter pound of white sugar. And it's everything I'm eating, protein, what's the problem? Well, there's the problem. And cheese does the same thing. So, in general, what we're going to see is the chronic diseases, heart disease, cancer, is in direct, you know, it's in proportion to the amount of vegetables. The more vegetables, the less chronic disease. Just to over, and that's really true with diabetes as well. Here we have uh, charts suggesting double the amount of diabetes with meat eaters. But... There's a range, and I, I'm basically sticking with 35 to 50 percent, but some research is showing it's, it's 200 percent more. We've covered the retinopathy, neuropathy, and all these things. These are the chronic degenerative effects, heart attack being the number one. And here we see on the left, uh, uh, number A, clogged arteries, and on the right, a clean, you know, this is pretty much from a vegan organic diet. Okay, now, this is what I was talking about before. If your blood sugar is over 86, there's a problem. And actually, uh, uh, almost 80% of the population over the age of 60, uh, 45 actually has, has that. Now, this is a normal glucose tolerance test. So just get a feeling for it. It takes some food, it goes up and it goes down. Now, this is a diabetic goes above 180, it's peaking, right? You can see a peak, um, and then it goes down. But that's what a diabetes looks like, okay? And now this is, this is glucose uh, spiking, normal fasting blood sugar. Oh, you go to the doctor and he's, it's normal. But if you don't have this whole chart, you don't see that it may or may not be normal. And it's that spiking that actually degenerates the beta cells of the pancreas. If your blood sugar, your fasting blood sugar is above, or your blood sugar at any time is above 100 for more than a few hours, the beta cells start to go into dysfunction. If it's above 110, they start to die. So get what we're talking about. So, and here's just some statistics I already mentioned to you. Uh, if, you're, if you're two hours after eating, if you're 96 or higher, you, you have a, a double your rate of mortality. From this. So I'm just giving you a flavor from it. If your blood sugar is above 88, 247% um, in first heart attacks. So we really want to hit the 85 mark. That's my, my thing. There's definitely an increase of cancer with sugar. Sugar feeds cancer cells. Cancer cells love sugar 10 to 50 t times more than uh, regular cells. And they love fructose. 10 times more than they love glucose. So fructose and, and glucose stimulate cancer. And that's kind of what all this data shows. I've kind of covered it in different ways. Um, so be aware. But fructose is a thing a lot of people don't quite understand. Oh, it's just fruit sugar. What's the problem? Right. It doesn't directly raise your blood sugar. That's confusing. What it does is disorganizes your leptin and insulin singling. It actually blocks insulin singing and leptin singling, besides disorganizing it. And so the system can't, or, can't work right. And then it moves you into insulin resistance and it moves you into diabetes, plus a few other things. Fructose is, not meta is metabolized in the liver, so it's the leading cause 
of non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. So I'm kind of keep that in mind because it's a big problem. People say, well, I'll just have fructose. Uh, this is not the way to go. You can have 15 to 25 grams of fructose a day and that's actually safe. What's that look like? Two bananas, a few kiwis, you know, a, little, a few persimmons. That, that's all what we're talking about. We're not, so you can have a little bit of fruit. And what we do recommend in our diet is, is uh, after your three months healed, you can have cherries and berries and things like that. So it's not safer, and this is the problem. Uh, this non uh, high fructose corn syrup is increased, you know, from what was introduced in the 80s to over the next 15 years or so, the use increased at 2,100%. That's a lot. And that's a problem. So, uh, this really, fructose is really actually, in a certain way, worse for us than glucose. Because it, 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 it also disturbs your fatty acid metabolism and the lipoproteins and so forth. Um, and there's one principle you need to know, it's called ages advanced glycation end products. And that's where glucose or fructose combines unnaturally with protein, completely disrupting enzyme function, DNA function, and also creating uh, these glycosylated uh, end products that uh, disrupt um, your heart and your blood vessels and your eyes and all those chronic things. That's glycosylation. It's measured by an A1C, which is the amount of glucose that is linked to your hemoglobin. And that's how you measure it. It's a good A1C is 5.6 or less. Diabetes is kind of diagnosed somewhere between 5.7 and 6.4. Okay, retinopathy starts at 6.1. So you can actually check this and it tells you your rate of glycosylation and your rate of glycosylation also tells you your rate of aging. So you want it 5.6 or less. So just kind of an overview of what we're talking about. We've kind of covered some of these and this is, is one of the things that we're looking at is diabetes, cre uh, fructose also creates obesity because it, it disrupts the, the uh, hormone called ghrelin and ghrelin is the, is the hormone that says stop eating. It blocks that. And, and, uh, and that's the grethlin I'm just talking about there. And uh, so it causes lots and lots of problems. And the result is simply this. Increased diabetes, heart disease, um, uh, hypertension, obesity, and gout. Kidney stones, because it breaks down into uric acid. Non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, brain inflammation because it inflames the glia cells, which are kind of the scavengers of the brain, and they create inflammation, cancer, and accelerated aging. So fructose isn't really a winner like people would like to frame it. Uh, it doesn't matter whether it's high fructose corn syrup or fruit. If you're above 25 grams, you're above 25 grams. Fructose is still fructose. Fruit too. Fruit as well. I'm talking about fruit. It's not as bad as high fructose corn syrup, but still above 25 grams total. The average person in the United States is at 81 grams. Now, a lot of research is done here. See, a lot on the fructose thing. This isn't just a, one article. 